Hello, everybody. It's Ashley here with Mindful Morning to get you started on the day. And today, I want to flip this idea of self-doubt on its head and suggest to you that perhaps this part of ourselves that is constantly doubting is just an endlessly selfish part of ourselves. And we may not need to worry or pay attention or cater to all of its demands. You know, when I was a little girl, I fell in love with acting. And there was this part of myself that was questioning whether or not I had talent as an actress. So then it was like, okay, well, if I go out there and take acting classes, then of course experience will help me become more confident and it will dissipate that uh, self-doubter inside. That didn't actually happen. It didn't work like that. You know, I took more classes and then the self-doubter just changed its tune a little. It was like, well, maybe if you get the lead in the school play, that'll prove everything, right? And then that happened and it just changed its tune again. And so then it was like, uh, maybe when you get into drama school or when you graduate or when you get your first acting job or your second and on and on and on and on. It was like, no matter how many accomplishments, no matter how much evidence I had to suggest to myself that I had talent, there was still a voice at the back of my head uh, questioning my ability and asking for more. So this part of ourselves is like it believes that there's something it can acquire, some kind of knowledge, skill set, um, you know, resource, talent, whatever, something it can acquire to make that, uh, you know, that noise of self-doubt disappear. But the evidence from our life experience shows us that no matter how much you feed it, it just asks for something else. It's like inherently selfish, right? Why is that? Why? Because it's trying to equip us for the future, and the future is always unknown. So there will always be doubt. So what happens if this self-doubter in us starts to say, you need to get X, Y, and Z first so that we can get you feeling more confident, so that we can set you up for success? Now, logically, that makes a lot of sense. But are you willing to bet your dream on the possibility that there is something you can get, have, do first to silence the self-doubter inside. When the need for more becomes a prerequisite for success, self-doubt can turn into a dream stealer. I believe that this part of ourselves, it's just not wise enough to run the show. Like it just doesn't know, it can't know, it never will know. But there is a wiser part in us that already knows that the only surefire way to move toward what you want is to get moving toward it, right? Now. And to bring that part of yourself that doubts and is terrified along for the ride. And the last thing that I will um, say about self-doubt is that perhaps it's not actually a problem to begin with. Maybe it's just an echo, a reflection of the things that we care about most. That maybe it's just reflecting back to us the things that we value, the things that we love, that we are terrified that we might possibly lose. That maybe it's just an echo in the background reflecting back to us what we value. So those are my ideas about self-doubt for you this morning. I would love to hear your opinion about self-doubt, how you handle self-doubt. Um, and if you like this, please like it. If you like it, leave a comment, write a review, share this with other people. And if you're getting something out of these Mindful Morning episodes, then take the next step and opt in for the Mindful Morning Toolbox. It's absolutely free, but you'll get all sorts of actionable resources, cheat sheets, exercises that just take these ideas to the next level. Okay, y'all, have a good day, and I'll see you tomorrow.